Hello, welcome to this edition of Intelligent Video Today. I'm your host, Steve Vonderhaar. Joining us on today's episode, Meninder Sani, Head of Growth over at 12 Labs. Welcome, Meninder. Steve, good to be here. So tell us a little bit about uh, the 12 Labs. How are you folks uh, positioning yourself? Uh, uh, you're a tool that uh, uh, helps us keep track of content in, in archived videos. Is that right? Yeah, of course. Happy to share. 12 Labs makes video foundation models. So most folks are familiar with large language models or LLMs, which are trained on large corpuses of textual or language data. We make the functional equivalent, but focused on video. That distinction around video is quite important because video is a very unique data format. As many of your listeners will know, video is very heavy. Uh, implicit within video is a whole lot of information across the various modalities, audio, visual, and very crucially, the spatial temporal relationships that exist within video. So what our models are able to do are it's able, they're able to understand, like you and I would, large corpuses of video data. So imagine you are a rights holder, maybe a broadcaster, maybe uh, law enforcement, government, et cetera, where you have large volumes of video data. And if you want to be able to more richly understand the corpus of content uh, at the scene level, the content level, you'd use our models to do so. Now you span those uh, number of different data types. You call yourself multimodal. You referenced that a little bit when talking about how 12 Labs is positioned itself, but it takes a little deeper in that concept of multimodal. What does that mean? And why is it important for extracting data from, from video files? Yeah, it's a good question. So if we think about video, uh, the multiple modalities that exist in it are Audio, so this can include conversation, uh, music, noises, uh, visual. This is going to be encompassing of, say, objects, action, uh, uh, people, and then also spatial temporal relationships. This is just a fancy way of saying the relative relation of things on screen over time. And that last bit is very, very important because traditional approaches to video understanding, say, uh, the prior generation computer vision models, uh, but also even the current age LLM approaches, they try to take video and split it into these various modalities. So they might run transcription on the audio, and then separately they might take a stream of the video, splice it into different images, pick a keyframe and do what's called keyframe analysis, and then say, hey, we duct tape the transcript and the keyframe analysis together. Here's video understanding. We respectfully don't think that's video understanding because you lose that very crucial element that's in video, which is the spatial temporal relationships. Uh, the example I like to use, it's a bit of a silly one, but it helps illustrate the point. Say your computer vision model picks a key frame of someone holding a doorknob. If you wanted to answer the simple question of is the door opening or closing, you wouldn't be able to do so with keyframe analysis because you're missing the spatial temporal relationship. Now, that's silly to you and I because we see a door closing. We know it's closing based on the relative movement of it. But that is an example of how our model is able to be more effective when it comes to video understanding. Does that make sense? It absolutely does make sense. And uh, uh, I guess with this multimodal approach, do we see any difference in the video search results based on the um, the, the, the resolution of the videos themselves? Uh, can this type of approach be applied to any legacy content out there? Absolutely. So to your question about does resolution make a difference, uh, our models are able to take video on the low end 360p and on the high end uh, 4K, so studio quality footage. And it is agnostic of the resolution, both in terms of uh, the model performance, but also in terms of the cost. And that second component is very, very important. Um, the second component is where some of the traditional approaches trip up and also the current age LLM approaches just become too cost prohibitive. You couldn't scale uh, the LLM application to say studio length video because uh, as your resolution increases, the cost of running the LLM approach increases. Our models comparatively are agnostic of the resolution. And so whether you have uh, the 360p footage from say grainy CCTVs or you have studio quality 4K, uh, the cost of indexing that video content will be the same. Our models are based on the consumption of video indexing. So you'd get charged based on the hours of video content, not the resolution of the video content. Does that answer your question? Absolutely. So uh, how can uh, video publishers go about using this type of video search? What kind of value can uh, this solution deliver for content creators? 
Yeah, there are a multitude of applications. So we focus on providing the best video understanding models and we make them accessible to developers and enterprises via our APIs. So we're not in the business of trying to sell you an end application. We want you and your editorial team, your production teams, et cetera, to continue using the tools you already know and enjoy using and keep your workflows. We just wanna be able to slot in to those existing applications via the API uh, and bring this functionality of video understanding uh, to whatever use case there could be. And so that's very high level and big. So I'll go into some specifics of how our models could be used. Um, so one of our clients is a uh, major American sports league and they use us in an editorial capacity. Say for any given game, there are hours of pre-game analysis, the broadcast footage, multiple camera angles, post-game interviews, et cetera. Traditionally, you would do a tagging exercise. There's a bounded taxonomy uh, that takes time, money, there are errors, false positive, false negatives for various tags. And then you would be able to use some sort of rudimentary search capability to find the moments that matter. Now, with our models, those editorial teams are able to do what's called semantic search for the moments that matter over the course of any sort of uh, game, uh, broadcast footage, et cetera. And instead of waiting on the manual tagging approach, they're able to do much richer searches and then accelerate their packaging and distribution processes, say for local broadcasters, for social teams, marketing teams, et cetera. Now I hear that you're also uh, finding some traction with automotive manufacturers. Can you tell us a little bit about that use case? Sure thing. So if you think about automotive uh, OEMs, there are a lot of video-based workflows. I know in, in the M&E world, uh, that might sound a little foreign, but if we think about autonomous driving use cases, uh, many of them are very camera driven. Uh, if we think about in-cabin driver experiences, that is also very camera driven. If we think about external vehicle security, that can also be uh, camera and video driven. So there are a multitude of applications of our models when it comes to video understanding. Say a novel use case could be a, a cabin camera being able to do uh, object detection uh, around you leaving something in the vehicle. And given the high performance of our models relative to traditional approaches, uh, it's an area of interest uh, that the automotive OEMs have expressed in our models. Now, at Intelvid Research, we see broader uses for video within the uh, AI enterprise. Matter of fact, we see the future of a kind of a virtuous cycle of video adoption, that uh, video will feed data into the private data sets. You'll generate more value from that data, encouraging folks to use video more and more over time, really being a rising tide that lifts the video boat, so to speak. Uh, uh, but it's going to take a lot for that to happen. What do you think it's going to uh, take within the marketplace to transform that vision for uh, video data management into a true market opportunity for 12 labs? Yeah, that, that's a very interesting thing. I think there's a couple of macro trends I've been playing uh, out over the course of the last couple of years, if not decades. Uh, I think one very big factor is the increased digitization of a lot of historical video content uh, for extending the life of content that might be on physical tapes, uh, for being able to preserve it, for being able to distribute it across various mediums and platforms. Uh, another one is uh, move to cloud. Uh, I think the cloud brings a lot of opportunity for uh, reimagining the way content management is done. So you take those two concurrent factors and you combine it with the ability to do uh, rich video understanding at scale there are a host of applications here. Uh, one really interesting one uh, we're seeing with the large film studios, they're sitting on a wealth of IP that may have been dormant for a while, and they're finding interesting and novel ways to repackage and remonetize some of that content because they're finding there are audiences for that wealth of content that exists that to date they haven't been able to effectively match against. But with something like our models, you can do more effective, say, contextual advertising at the scene level. You could have a better understanding of the overall corpus of content. Um, so it really accelerates a lot of workflows that studios or any organization that owns a lot of this video data may be thinking about already. But our models make it so that it becomes feasible and also cost effective to do so. So what's on the near-term product roadmap for 12 Labs? What are what do you got working in the lab that we should be looking out for? Yeah, so uh, I, I want to plug here that folks should go check out our website at 12labs.io. Uh, our model playground is free to sign up for, and folks get 10 hours of free uh, indexed content. So you can upload some of your own video content and see how well it works across our semantic search and retrieval functionality, but also our 
video to text generation where you can do highlight creation, chapterization, uh, uh, text descriptions of content at the scene level, et cetera. Um, but to answer your question about what we're working on, we're always laser focused on having the most performant video understanding models. So uh, coming up on our model roadmap, we have a couple of interesting releases coming out that are going to push the boundary of what's possible from a video understanding performance perspective, both by academic benchmarks, but also industry application. So we're working on that, uh, which we should be releasing here in a couple of months. That's awesome. So uh, at Intelligent Research, we're kind of excited about this uh, conference we're going to be having coming up in a couple of months in February 2025. We're holding the Intelligent Video Expo in Fort Lauderdale, Florida. Uh, we're going to be bringing together people to talk about business use cases for uh, AI video. Uh, and what what issues do you think we should be talking about at that show when, when we finally get, get all together down in, in Florida? Yeah, I, I'd say... We're at a very interesting point in time right now. When it comes to video, the AI world is catching up to a lot of the traditional workflows and use cases. And the one thing I would say to folks is to try some of this new tooling that's out there and available. I think things that prior were too cost prohibitive or were too much of a pipe dream are actually quite feasible now with uh, pretty lean resources. It's something where uh, someone with a little bit of curiosity can go Kind of check it out and with pretty limited development resources set up something that is delivering tangible business value so uh, the things to keep in mind is that the barrier to entry is a lot lower now than it was just even a year ago it's an exciting time to uh, be in the video space we're getting the democratization of intelligent video right in front of our eyes it'll be fun to watch uh, over the months and years ahead uh, Man uh, maninder sami uh, from 12 Labs, head of growth there. Thanks so much for taking the time to visit with us today. Of course. Thanks for having me, Steve. And we thank you for taking the time to watch today's episode. If you'd like access to more thought leadership from industry executives like Maninder Sani of 12 Labs, just go to the link uh, on our YouTube channel right below there. Subscribe and you'll get notifications to future episodes of our interview series. For Intellivid Research and Intelligent Video Today, I'm Steve Onderhaar. Thanks for your time.